So firstly, Sheena, congratulations on your win. What was going through your mind when your name was called? Um, nothing, except <laughs> it just went blank. And then I was like, shit, I haven't, oh, sorry, sorry. But I haven't prepared anything. Um, so I was a bit like, okay, remember to thank all the people. And then I forgot, <laughs> I forgot Granta, which I feel really bad about. Oh, well, you can thank them now if you <laughs> yeah, want yeah, to talking to me. Thank you, Granta. <laughs> <laughs> So when you were published um, for the first time in hardback yes. by Rough Trade Books, how did that come to happen? How did they come to publish you? Well, I'm with a collective called Four Brown Girls Who Write, and um, in the in the pandemic, we um, published a set pamphlet. So each one of us did a pamphlet, and then um, in lockdown, the winter one, the one that went on forever and was almost impossible to get through. Um, I watched the attacks on the Capitol mm. with everyone else and then I started to write something about like unavailable love and mm -hmm. fandom and the structures the structures of that mm. and kind of connecting it to a, to a person that had a relationship where they had someone unavailable but mm. Trump and Boris felt like that same sort of character like we were trapped in a relationship with someone emotionally unavailable mm. or a government that felt emotionally unavailable so I was just kind of connecting those things and then Nina mm. was like turn it into a book and I was like don't know how to write a book and then she was like don't worry we'll kind of coach you through it yeah and then Lucy who's my agent um brought Granter on mm. um and they've they've sort of like brought it to a wider audience so mm. between the two of them they've both been amazing yeah so how has your life changed since your since it's been published your debut um, people listen to what I have to say, <laughs> um, but I'm still struggling for a place to live, so I don't think it's changed that much, but um, it's brought a lot of, um, it's brought a lot of opportunity, and, and that, and also people, if I want to speak to someone or mm. I want to connect with somebody that feels like it's a lot easier for it to happen because mm. I've got this like little calling card. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's changed and it's not changed. Mm. Okay. Um, and then obviously you've just won the Discover Award. Uh, which writer do you recommend that we discover next? Well, on on that short list, Pretty mm. Tanager is mm. um, incredible. And after m I honestly thought Aftermath was going to win, which is why I was just like, I didn't prepare anything because I just thought she would win. But sh I met her because she works at the Newcast at Newcastle University and she brought me up with a couple of other authors for a talk. Mm. And I met her and she's just totally magic. And it felt amazing to meet like an Indian British author mm. that had been through the publishing system. Mm. And it really felt like a kind of like mentor or sister mm. sort of relationship. I just was really bewitched by her. Mm. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend Aftermath. Oh, fabulous. And then what are you a fan of and what is the best thing about being a fan? <laughs> I don't know if I'm a fan of anything now, but when I was a teenager, I was obsessive about Michael Jackson. Okay. Um, like absolutely obsessive, mm. uh, but which has now been reassessed in light of mm. recent stories. But um, but that's but that loss of mm. I think that loss of loving something and so, you know him being who he is coming to light and then having to reassess the love of the art mm. I found definitely informed the book. Mm. That sense of um, I know what it's like to be a fan. I know I was just uh, completely in love with him mm. and um, did all the things that fans do, which is like write letters to him and do all those things and went to see him at, in concert and mm. just listened to nothing but him. So I do know what that um, relationship is. Mm. And also I think fans, teenage girl fans, move culture mm. in a way that isn't really um, sort of acknowledged or or given the prominence that it should Absolutely, be yeah yeah it's a very powerful force it's a very it? powerful that that concentrated mass adulation mm. can really move things in culture mm. you know it made david bowie it made the beatles like without that sort of that kind of it's so it's so beautiful in a mm. way to be that bare and vulnerable about what you love mm. um and i think fandom really um opens itself up to that yeah absolutely um, so just a few quick fire questions. Oh God, here we go. We'll, we'll let you go. So which books are on your bedside table <gasps> right now? Um, I'm reading Eileen because I'm interviewing Atessa Moshfei on Wednesday. Oh, so I'm just working oh, my way through that. Yeah. So I've just read Lapvona. Mm. Um, I've got Penance by Eliza Clark mm -hmm. um, on the bedside table. And I met Millie Bhatia, who is a theatre director. She's left me a couple of her plays. So they're by my bed as well. Fabulous. 
And then um, when you're writing, which three things do you need to have around you when you're writing? Silence, um, my laptop, and an idea. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not necessarily all there at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that, is a, that is the best answer we've had. One final question. How do you plan to celebrate your wins? I'm going to get extremely <laughs> drunk. <laughs> we are going to get drunk now. Yeah, good. Good for you.